Hi, my name is Wout Remy and today we're here at the Armstrong Flight Research Center of NASA all the way at the Edwards Airfield Base. So really excited and by the way this is a really important bit of history. This is the X-1, the first plane to ever break the sound barrier. So let's go interview some of the people at NASA and a big thank you to Sarah Mann for organizing this. Before we move to the interview I just want to show you just how inspiring Edwards Air Force Base is with all cool planes on display. There's a lot of really cool experimental planes, or X-planes as they call them, developed by NASA on display on this site. This blue and white one is the one with the supercritical wing. The black one, we all know it, it's the Blackbird SR-71. This is a modified F-15 Eagle with thrust vectoring to increase maneuverability of the plane. This is the backside of the SR-71 going Mach 3.5 more or less. Massive engines there. This is the Pratt & Whitney J-58 powering. The Blackbird, um, really cool, really cool planes. And then we come across a really interesting one. Um, if we go to the right here, this is the Northrop HL-10, which is a heavyweight lifting body to test space re-entry, to glide back into space. And then we got to walk through a hall where there's a lot of pictures of other X-planes that they worked on. Let's have a look. This one is the X-1, which we saw outside, the first plane to go through the barrier of sound at leveled flight. And, interesting fact, it was actually launched from a much bigger aircraft, which you can see in this picture. The next one is a really quirky one. It's the M2F1 lifting body, plane without wings. And then there's the lunar landing research vehicle to test how this would land on the moon. The A-2-2 fly-by-wire X-plane. And then the X-29 forward swept wing, really interesting in terms of stability, maneuverability. And then there's the HARV, which is the high angle research vehicle. So a modified F-18, which could fly and do tests at high angles of attack. Then there's the X-31, which is an enhanced flight maneuverability demonstrator. And then after this one, because I couldn't find this one, drop a comment if you know which one this is. And then there's the X-15, the Max 6.7 aircraft and also the crew which flew this aircraft. Really inspiring. Hey Sean, good to meet you. You too. Thanks for taking the time. Um, we had the interview together, it's good to see you in yes. real life. Yes. Um, so maybe walk us through the project from start to finish. This is the donor plane, but right. please explain the goals of the project and so on. Yeah, so we... <coughs> We wanted to use the electric propulsion technology and change what we were doing with airplane design. And yes. so uh, we took this uh, Technum uh, four-seat airplane, it's a P2006T, and we built an electric propulsion system for it and, and built some electric motors and inverters and a battery system uh, so that we could first understand the challenges with electric propulsion, yes. but then also design a custom wing that has distributed propulsion uh, using 14 different motors spread along the wing so that we could really push the, the limits of, of a wing design and understand how propulsion and, and the aerodynamics of the wing could work together. Yeah, because all in all, um, if you take into account the switch to batteries, the switch to more aerodynamic concepts, you're mm -hmm. aiming for a factor of five in terms of efficiency, which is huge. Yeah. And that's one of the main reasons for projects, right? To reduce the carbon footprint of aviation. That's right. So. You get a lot of benefits from electrification, just like we see in the automobile market. That they're so much more efficient to use electric motors as opposed to uh, gas burning on the airplane. Yeah. So that's a big win for us. But then there's so much more you can do once you start to have these lightweight motors that you can put all over the place. So we can make a wing that's very efficient for, for high speed flight, yes. um, but still safe to land and take off because we can add extra motors to help it in the landing and taking off phase. Yeah, yeah. because that's problem or the challenge of modern day aviation, you need a wing that is big enough to take off, but once you cruise exactly. it, you could make due with a wing which is less than half the size. Exactly. Right? So if you put the distributed propellers in front of the wing, you blow the wing, which means you artificially increase the lift, and then at cruise you can just turn them off. Yeah. So the concept was really cool with foldable propellers. We don't see them here because the project was actually set up to be done in four phases, right? So phase one, yeah. two, three, four. Can you walk us through those That's phases? That's exactly right. Yeah. So we started, what we call phase one is really a, a baseline. We wanted to see what a, a off-the-shelf tech them that anyone could go fly, yes. how well it performs so that we could measure how much better the, the new system would be. So our pilots uh, got one of those aircraft, we put a bunch of instrumentation on it yeah. and, and got the flight characteristics and performance of that and, and we learned a lot from that activity. What we have here is almost the same airplane, it's phase two, this yes. is what we call the modification level two. Uh, it's the same but it's electrified. So yes. we have electric motors in place of the, the Rotax engines. We've got an inverter system that we designed, and then in the back of the airplane is batteries. 
So there's no gas, it's all electric power that's stored and charged from our, our uh, hangar facility here and then flies around with no emissions. So that helps us understand just the conversion, directly going from gas burning to electric. But then what gets really interesting is phase three and four. Yeah. So that's where we have this new wing. Exactly like you said, we want a very efficient wing that's optimized for the high speed cruise. Um, so that's what phase three would be, is, is move this electric propulsion system onto the new wing, move it out to the wing tip so we can start to see some of the benefits of, of those motors in a lightweight position yes. out, all the way out at the edge. To counter the vortices. Exactly, well. so we get some, some uh, efficiency benefits by, by reducing that vortex drag. But then in phase four, we get that full landing performance back because we add 12 small motors along the yes. wing. Uh, we don't use them in cruise, so we need them to be very low drag in cruise, and that's why we went with this folding propeller yes. design. But then when we need to land or during takeoff, they, they spin up and fold out, and then we get all this extra lift over the wing because they're spread along the leading edge. Yeah, and they're fairly lightweight because they're electric, electric motors are really small. Exactly. Maybe we can just walk around the plane. Sure. You can point to some interesting details. So this would be the electric. Yeah, so this is, this is the stock wing, but we replaced almost everything in the nacelle here. So we have this electric motor here. Uh, it's a it's a stock propeller, but then our, our fully electric motor that uh, gets much better efficiency. So the motor itself yeah. is about 92% efficiency, okay. and then the inverter system that sits behind the motor is 98% efficient. Yeah. And so that's really important because it helps reduce the, the energy required, that's helpful, but what's so important for all of these electric uh, aircraft designs is the thermal uh, challenges. Yes. And so, Whatever energy is left over that doesn't get put into the propeller is heat that we yes. have to deal with. And so having 92% and 98% means that there's not very much heat and we can actually do this all with air cooling. So just the air that's coming into okay. the motor is able to cool the whole thing down and keep it very simple and very lightweight. So yeah. it's a very high performance system. And right now, I guess the cowling and everything is quite comparable to have that benchmark between the two verses. But exactly. Theory, you could actually make this much more narrow given You could reduce efficiency. it a little bit. We, we, we kept it uh, pretty much the same. There, there, were, there are some scoops for the Rotax yes. that are for cooling. We don't need them because we're able to get all of our cooling right here. Yeah. So that was a, a big win for us. We have a, a small scoop up on top, but that's really about it. Um, and, and the system could be reduced further. This is a prototype, and so you can continue to optimize this and, and improve the design. And in fact, when we put the, uh, when we designed the new wing and move all of this out to the wing tip, we made it much more compact and, and yeah. really pushed it to the limit of the design. Okay. And let's have a look inside, maybe. Yeah. And so, so Sarah, come on around. Yeah. Can, uh, so, have a look. What so, can see. For, our, for our prototype aircraft here, the, the instrument panel on, on the left side is, is almost stock. Technum aircraft. So we, we have all the same instruments here that the pilot would use. Yeah. And then the instruments on the right are all the electric propulsion. And then as you can see, the, the co-pilot seat's gone. There is no passenger seat on the right side. Yes. It's all instrumentation and control. And then the back of the aircraft, there were normally two more seats and then luggage area, but that's all for batteries now. So we've yeah. got our batteries over here in our storage area, but uh, we would have about 800 pounds of batteries, 400 pounds in the back seat and 400 more pounds in the luggage compartment. Yeah. And that was enough to give us maybe 40 minutes of flight time for, oh, for this aircraft. So it's, it's enough to do research, but batteries yeah. need to improve a little bit more before you could make a commercial version of this. Yeah, and definitely the number of cycles you can do, that's all critical to exactly. make it a commercial success or not. Yeah. Okay, it's very interesting. Other things on the aircraft, so um, landing here, everything was the same. What did you learn already during the flight testing you did so far? How, how, what was the pilot feedback? Is it nice to fly? Is it... So what we found, so we, we have not flight tested the Mod 2 version, but we've done extensive simulation studies, in, including all of the work we did on characterizing the electric propulsion system. And, and our design works really well. We're able to get this Mod 2 configuration to behave very much like a, a stock Techno. Yeah. Um, what's really interesting is in Mod 4, when you've got this high performance wing, uh, we have this lift augmentation system with the, the leading edge propellers. And what that does for us is lets us program how much extra lift the pilot gets depending on his airspeed. And yeah. so that was really interesting in our yeah. simulators. He can, he can slow down a little bit and automatically the wing makes extra lift to counteract the lift that's lost from the airspeed. Yeah. And so it's really nice to fly that Mod 4 version. Uh, one of the challenges we found is when you move our, our propulsion system out to the wingtip, yeah. then you have a challenge with making sure that the, the failures that are associated with having a motor stop or an inverter or a battery system go offline are controllable. So the pilots spend a lot of time working through the different 
uh, emergency scenarios, and, and we've learned quite a bit about that as well. Because if one of the two fails at the fix, you get a lot of yaw on your aircraft. Exactly. Yeah, and if you have a failure in your lift documentation, then you can get a lot of roll. So there's yes. a lot of dynamics there that are really interesting, and, yeah. and our pilots were able to help us work through. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Sean. It was Wonderful. really interesting meeting you, and thanks for the tour. <laughs> sure, absolutely.